This video will cover the topic, writing the equation of a rational function given its graph. The first thing to look for when attempting to write an equation of a rational function given its graph is the vertical asymptotes, if there are any. What is a vertical asymptote? Vertical asymptotes are vertical lines that are at different values of x depending on which values of x make the denominator of the function equal zero. Usually, the function either grows or shrinks significantly around the asymptote, but never reaches it since the function is undefined there. We also need to look for horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes are horizontal lines that are located at different values of y. If the numerator and the denominator have the same highest degree, then the horizontal asymptote is located at the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. If this isn't the case, and there is a horizontal asymptote, it will be at y is equal to zero. Let's try an example. The figure below shows the graph of a rational function f. It has vertical asymptotes, x is equal to three, and x is equal to negative four and horizontal asymptote, y is equal to zero. The graph also has an x-intercept at x equals negative two, and it passes through the point two comma two. The equation for f of x has one of the five forms shown below. Choose the appropriate form for f of x, and then write the equation. You can assume f of x is in simplest form. We are given two vertical asymptotes at x is equal to three and x is equal to negative four. These are the zeros of the denominator. So if we were to subtract three from both sides, we get x minus three. And if we were to add four to both sides, we get x plus four equals zero. These are factors of the denominator. So the denominator is x minus three times x plus four. Because we don't know the value of the numerator or any of the values that will be in the numerator, we can write the numerator as ax squared plus bx plus c. This is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c divided by x squared plus x minus 12. Now we need to find a, b, and c, and then we'll know the value of the numerator. How do we do that? We already used all of the vertical asymptotes to find the denominator. Remember that the horizontal asymptote is helpful too, and we haven't used this yet. In fact, just by looking at the horizontal asymptote, we know that a has to be equal to zero since the horizontal asymptote is at y is equal to zero. And the horizontal asymptote is equal to the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. Because the leading coefficient of the denominator is one, zero, divided by one is zero. So a is equal to zero. Okay, that makes sense. But what about b and c? Do we use the x-intercept and other point they give us to find these values? Exactly, that's right. So let's start by using the other point given to us, two comma two. By plugging in two, where f of x is, and placing a 2 wherever there is an x in our original function, we get that 2 is equal to b times 2 plus c divided by 2 squared plus 2 minus 12. This is equal to 2b plus c divided by negative 6. By multiplying both sides by negative 6, we get negative 12 since negative six times two is negative 12, is equal to two b plus c. Now, 
we're going to use the x-intercept. This means the f of x is going to be 0, and x is going to be negative 2. When we plug in these values, we get 0 is equal to negative 2b plus c divided by 4 minus 2 minus 12. This simplifies down to negative 2b plus c divided by negative 10. If we multiply both sides by negative 10, we get negative 10 times 0, which is still 0, is equal to negative 2b plus c. So now we have two equations. 2b plus c is equal to negative 12, and negative 2b plus c is equal to 0. If we were to add these equations together, we get 0b, since 2b minus 2b would be 0b, plus 2c is equal to negative 12. So this simplifies down to 2c is equal to negative 12. If we divide both sides by 2, we get c is equal to negative 6. Since we now have c, we can plug in negative 6, where we see a c, in either two of these equations. I'll do it for the first one. 2b minus 6 is equal to negative 12. If we then add 6 to both sides, this results in 2b is equal to negative 6. And if we divide both sides by 2, we get b is equal to negative 3. We would get the same result if we plugged in negative 6 in the second equation as well. By replacing b and c with negative 3 and negative 6 respectively, we get that f of x is equal to negative 3x minus 6 divided by x squared plus x minus 12, which is equal to negative 3 times x plus 2 divided by x minus 3 times x plus 4. So our answer to this question would be the fourth option. And then we would plug in the appropriate values for a, b, c, and d, which are negative 3, 2, 3, and negative 4, respectively. Okay, I think I'm starting to understand this better now. So we first use the vertical asymptotes to find the denominator. Then we write the numerator in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, and then use the horizontal asymptote and other points given to us to find the values of a, b, and c. Is this right? That's right. Good job.